Feliz Navidad, power players. Welcome to the T-shirt transfer paper power half hour brought to you by the many wonderful folks here at Condi Systems Incorporated. My name is Doug DeWitt, product manager here at Condi and your host for today's episode. Welcome to the show. I think we've got a good topic lined up for you today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do another episode dedicated to the CadLink Digital Factory 10 RIP, uh, the RIP program that is now supplied with the new Creo white toner t-shirt printers. And today's episode, we're going to try to mimic what is known in the forever transfer RIP as the micro mask function which I think is a great function of a RIP program because it's one of those tools that creates a better overall transfer. And we're going to discuss that today and we're going to see if we can replicate the same effects produced with micro masking in the forever transfer RIP and do it in the digital factory 10 RIP. So hope you pay attention. Hope you enjoy the show. But of course, before we get started, what do we got to do, Rodeo Bo? We got to pay the power bill. And the first thing I want to talk about is our webinar Wednesday. And tomorrow we're going to have Miss Lauren Kilgore. Now, Lauren owns Beautiful Mesh, but she's also an Etsy expert. And the show title tomorrow is What You Really Need to Start an Etsy Shop. Now, what she is going to detail are all the things like the registration information, finders fees, user forms, terms and conditions, everything that you have to go through to set up your Etsy store. And if you're not selling on Etsy, then you need to tune in. And that webinar is going to be tomorrow at 1230 Central Standard Time. And we are going to broadcast it on Condi TV, which is our YouTube channel, as well as on Facebook Live. So make sure you tune in to that one. Another thing I want to tell you about, it's holiday season, it's Christmas time, and in the spirit of giving, uh, Sprite and Rodeo Bo have been working like little elves around the clock to come up with some great art packs, holiday art packs. And you know what? They are going to give you free art pack download with every order over $75 placed during the month of December. Uh, just our way of saying thank you. Want to thank Sprite and Rodeo Bo for knocking out all those um, art files. I took a peek at them. They look pretty cheerful, okay? You know, unlike Sprite and Bo, which are usually sarcastic. So we're bringing you some holiday cheer. It's free art download for all orders over 75. Uh, jump on dietrans.com, click on the banner for more information. And of course, when we're talking about placing orders, $75 or over gets you the free art pack. $200 or more gets you free Condi delivery. Some restrictions apply, so make sure you read the fine print. And of course, we can't pay the pay power bill without mentioning The Road to Sublimation Success, co-authored by our very own David Gross. Hey, if you've got a sublimator that you need to get a holiday gift for, this should have been the first thing on your list. So if it's not, Put it at the very top of the list and make sure you get it. The road to sublimation success. But wanted to let you know that we've got more resources available for you now. We have got 125 ways to make money with sublimation. We have got the road to sublimation success Chroma Lux edition. All right, that teaches you all about the fine art of printing fine Chroma Lux metal. And now you can document everything with your very own sublimation journal. All of these resources are available through Condi. You can order them on Amazon and you can download them to Kindle. All right, Rodeo Bo, I think that takes care of paying the power bill. Bo is shaking his head yes, so we're going to go ahead and get started with today's topic, which in the forever transfer rip is a pattern that is called micro mask. Okay, now what exactly does micro mask mean? Well, what micro mask means is it is going to apply a uniform pinhole pattern to your graphic, okay? So in other words, unlike screening for dark where it's knocking out the black or screening for bright where it's knocking out the white, when you use the micro mask feature, all colors print intact, you know, whether it's white or black or any other color in the spectrum in between. And all colors are gonna have that uniform pin pattern to it. Now, why is that so important? Okay, well, the reason we want to use a micro mask, especially when we're dealing with a full fill graphic, is one, 
it's going to reduce the amount of surface tension. Now that means the amount of surface tension that you feel on the garment, but it's also going to mean the surface tension whenever you're performing the A to B transfer and you're peeling away the B sheet. If you ever try to print a design as a solid design, you're going to notice you're struggling to remove the B sheet. Sometimes the B sheet has a tendency to pull and you get like big areas of white that pull off of your A foil and you wonder why doesn't this lay down consistently? Well, that's because it's a self-weeding paper. It's designed not to lay down solid film. So when you add the distress pattern of a micro mask, what you're actually going to get is an easier, cleaner weed because you're basically in the wheelhouse of what the A and B sheet was designed to do. Now, when we apply that design to our fabric, by having those little pinholes within the, within the design, <clears throat> what that is going to do is it's going to reduce the overall surface tension. So if you've ever made a design with a white, you know, toner t-shirt printer and you're like, why does my design feel so heavy? Why does it feel so crusty? You know, why is it so stiff? It's because you're not breaking up that surface tension. You're printing a solid fill design. Micro masking helps with that. So you get a much softer feel to the design on the garment than printing, you know, just as a standard out the drive print. Another thing it does is it aids in the flexibility, okay? And it reduces what I'm gonna call premature surface cracking, okay? Basically, we're reducing that premature surface cracking, in essence, by pre-cracking the design. That's what the micro mask allows us to do. And by having those varying dropout points, what it does is it gives the overall design the flexibility that it needs to move with the shirt. Now, because we have that uniform pinhole pattern in there, when we take that garment and we put it into the washing machine, in a wash cycle, if you don't have a micro mask effect, you got a solid transfer, the water in the tub is literally butting up against that design. That's what's going to basically create the premature cracking. It's what's going to cause the design essentially to flake off of the garment prematurely. But by having those holes in there, the water is allowed to flow freely through the design. And by doing that, you're reducing the wear and tear inside the wash tub, and it's going to extend the life durability of that design. So there are many reasons why we need to employ a micro mask. Next question would be, when do we do it? When do we use a micro mask feature as opposed to screening for bright or screening for dark or not doing any screening at all? Well, to me, what it really boils down to is the color of your garment or the color of your substrate, okay? Whenever we're screening for bright or we're screening for white, we're purposely knocking out the white. Whenever we're screening for dark, what we're knocking out is black. So with those two functions, you've got a white shirt covered, you've got a black shirt co covered. When I micro mask is for all those colors in between white and black, such as athletic gray, red, blue, green, yellow, brown, orange, turquoise, you get the picture. In other words, you're dealing with a color t-shirt or a color garment where you have to print all the colors within the design, okay? That's when you want to employ the micro mask feature. Another time you want to employ it is when you're basically dealing with a full bleed design. If you've got a naturally broken design like letters or numbers, you're really not going to have to micro mask that. But what we're going to use as examples today, which is old movie posters, these are the types of designs that you definitely want to employ the micro mask feature. Okay. Now, when it comes to micro masking features, there's basically two standard features of a micro mask. There's a micro mask with a dot pattern, and there's a micro mask with a line or stripe pattern. Now, what's the difference between the two? By using the line pattern, what you can do is set up your design to have vertical break lines. So if you're going on to a garment that's supposed to stretch when worn, you know, let's say like an athletic jersey or a baby doll tee, that design will flex with the material and not put so much tension on that the, you get the surface cracking. As far as the dot design is concerned, I like to use that with a good heavyweight t-shirt or sweatshirt or hoodie, you know, materials that are heavier like that. Now, as far as the dot is concerned, depending on the size of the design, we may have to open up the dot pattern a little bigger 
to make sure that we get that softness and flexibility, yet at the same time, not opening it up so much that we lose some of the fine detail within the design. So there's kind of a happy medium that we need to find. And we're gonna do a few experiments with that right now. So Bo, if you can go ahead and hit the button, let's jump into my, com let's jump into my computer and let's go into the Digital Factory 10 RIP. Now Bo. Thank you Bo. So here we are at the Digital Factory 10 RIP. Let's go ahead and explore how to employ a micromass feature within this rip. <clears throat> Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing I want to do is go over to my media type. And as you'll notice here, you'll see forever paper listed, but you'll see forever with holes and forever with stripes. You also have it for freestyle paper, parapy paper, and Nina image clip paper. So essentially printing with holes or printing with stripes is our micro mass feature. So let's start with the basic one here. Let's do forever dark with holes. Now let's also make sure that our media type is properly selected. I'm going to be using tabloid paper for today's demonstration. Uh, make sure that we're printing to our multi-purpose tray. We've got our media weight selected. Let's go ahead and import our graphic. I'm going to open up, go into my file here, and let me grab my first graphic. Now you'll notice as I bring it into the rip, I've got it going against this kind of aqua blue substrate. You know, in other words, we want to apply this design to a color that's not black, it's not white. So at this point, giving the coverage of the design, and to show you here, we are basically dealing with a design that's approximately 10.7 inches wide by 16 inches tall, okay? So this is what I would consider to be a full coverage design. This is the type of design that we're gonna to want to micro mask. Okay, so with our file highlighted, let's double click. And let's go into the job properties for this particular design. What I want to do is click on the pull down for color layer. And the first thing that I want to do is check my layer profile. And the reason I want to do that is I want to make sure that I am using all four process colors in my Creo 8432 WDT. And I also want to make sure that my flood level is set to 255. So in other words, if I need solid red or solid black, it's going to print it. The next thing I want to check is my processing options. Now here, under the coverage percentage, this is the amount of white toner that we're going to use as an underbase. Uh, generally speaking, we would go 150 if we were going on to a lighter color garment or 200 if we were going on to a darker garment. Now the choke feature here this is basically what is known as underprinting. This is choking off the white pixels on the edge of the design. And since we're going to use this micro mass feature, I like to go with a minimum of three pixels, even though this setting says medium. What we want to make sure is that we don't have any white pixels poking out from under our dropout dots. Okay, so now that we've got that set, I can just skip on down to the last option which is the ink removal. Now, we wanna make sure that ink removal is enabled. We've got here the frequency, okay? And this is the first feature we are going to play with. But we'll notice here that the default for the frequency is 20. This kind of operates like the mask size in the forever transfer rip. In other words, the lower the number, the bigger the dropout hole in the mask feature, the higher the number, the smaller and tighter the dropout hole. We'll show you some examples of that in a second. As far as the hole size, it's defaulting to 180. Uh, We're going to leave that set. Um, also here, you'll say very hole size in areas of partial transparency. Now, we've only got to worry about partial transparency whenever we're screening for a white shirt or screening for a black shirt. But whenever we're micromasking, so to speak, we're basically telling the rip to print the entire design. 
So we can go ahead and disable that feature. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here to lock in my features. I'm gonna go ahead and rip this file. And then what I'm gonna do after the file rips, I wanna view the raw data so that you could see this dropout pattern. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set my substrate to white so it might be a little easier to see the dropout dots. Let me go ahead and just zoom in this area here. And I hope everybody at home can see that. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter what the color is, whether it's a light color, a dark color, or any shade in between, every area gets a uniform amount of these dropout dots. That is the micromass feature. Okay, now while we're here, let's change a couple of things to see how they would look. Since we can rip the file before we print and view the raw data, we can basically play with settings, so to speak, before we actually hit the print button. One thing I want to show you here is we're going to change the frequency. I want to drop that frequency number from 20 to 10. Let's leave everything else the same. Let me rip the file again. And now let's view that raw data. So as you can see, once I change my substrate color here, you will notice that the whole pattern is much bigger than what it was previously. Now, by having this bigger whole pattern, like I said, it's gonna make the design more flexible and more durable because water is gonna be able to flow through it easier. <coughs> However, we may have lost some of the fine detail within the design by going with such a low frequency number, okay? So, let's reset things. Let's change this frequency number again. Go back into ink removal, and let's change the frequency from 10 to 40. Let's go from one extreme to the other. We'll leave everything else the same. We'll rip the file. And then we will view the raw data. Change the background color for you here, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Now, if we zoom in to the same area, you see we have a much smaller, tighter hole pattern than what we had previously. So in other words, with this design here, we can capture more of that detail but then again, we're gonna probably suffer in the terms of image softness and durability because these holes are so small. So basically what we gotta do is find a happy medium, so to speak. Now, what I would like to do is bring in another graphic so we can demonstrate working the micro mask with lines. Let's use this one here, Rodeo. There's my other design. I'm gonna zoom out just a bit. Now, like I said, when do we want to micro mask in case this design is going on a yellow shirt or a purple shirt or an army green? Basically, if we're dealing with any other color than black or white. Let's get into the properties. Let's go back into our color layer again. Let's make sure that we've got all four process colors selected, that we're going with a flood level of 255. Under processing options, I'm gonna leave my coverage for white underbase at 200%. Again, I'm going to select 
three pixels as far as my choke is concerned. Now, when we go to ink removal here, pardon me, let's change this shape to line. Now, one thing you'll have to do whenever you use the line, when we're talking about using a line micro mask, we really can only run the lines in two directions, horizontal or vertical. Now, if we were operating in the forever transfer rip and we wanted the lines to be vertical, we would have to set the angle at zero. For some reason with the CAD Link 10 rip, to set the lines as vertical lines, we've got to set the angle at 90. Again, I'm going to leave the whole size here the same. I'm going to disable the partial transparency because like I said, we're basically using a micro mask feature. Let's go ahead and rip that. Let me right click, view raw data. Now you can see the vertical lines within this design. Like I said, we want to employ this feature whenever we're dealing with what I would consider to be a stretching or flexible fabric material. Uh, something like your microfiber polyester or your lightweight cottons, okay? If the design is going to stretch, use the line micro mask. It will work out beautifully. Just to show you here, I changed all process colors to black. So essentially that is the micro mask printer that your printer will be printing, okay? Now that we've seen the line pattern, let's make a few adjustments to the line pattern. And where we're going to adjust is what's called the hole size. Let's go back into our color layer, ink removal. You'll notice here as far as the hole size, if we set it to zero, it's basically commanding the Creo not to put down any toner. If we set it to 255, basically we're negating the micro mass process because we're telling the printer to put toner down everywhere. Now the default was at 180. But what I'm going to do here is I want to reset this to 75. So in other words, kind of past the halfway point here toward the no ink side. Just so I could show you how light the pattern gets. Let me go ahead and rip this one real quick, Rodeo, so I could show everyone at home the data. Let's change this background color real quick. And now that you can see here, basically the gap of the dropout stripe pattern has increased. Okay? And that was with a setting of 75. If we wanted to tighten up that setting, so to speak, we can always double click on the file to get back into the ticket properties, go into our color layer, ink removal. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum, Bo. Let's go 225. Click OK here. You'll notice we're leaving all other variables the same. And this is kind of how we learn what the RIP does. So, basically with the 75 setting on the whole size, we had a lot of dropout. Set at 225. You can barely see the white brake lines. As a matter of fact, it's more of a dash pattern now than a solid line break. So again, you know, we're trying to find the happy medium of putting in enough break where we've got some flexibility and some wash durability, but not so much break that we're losing the fine detail within the graphic. And that's basically how you micro mask within the Digital Factory 10 RIP. To show you again real quick, what you want to make sure is that when you're first setting up your file, Use your holes option if you want a dot micro mask pattern. Use your stripe function if you want a horizontal or vertical line micro mask pattern. Now, some of the other things to consider is 
Make sure that you use this option whenever you're doing full bleed color. And also use that view raw data so that you can preview a lot of the subtle changes that you make before you go ahead and hit the print button. So I hope you appreciate the overview there on basically how to micro mask within the Digital Factory 10 RIP. Now before you go, we're going to show you some output examples that we did using these different variables in the micro mask so you can see the effect it has on the overall transfer. So let me just reach down here, Rodeo. And the first one I'm going to do, if you can go ahead and give me the overhead, it's this one. So here is our first War of the Worlds poster. Now this was done with the default setting as far as the masking with the holes, where the frequency was set at 20, the angle was set at 22 degrees, we're using an inverted round dot, our hole size, which was default to 180, and the transparency hole size is at 0.7. But like I said, we're not using transparency hole size because we're basically printing the entire graphic. Now, when we dropped the frequency from 20 to 10, while it might be hard for the camera to pick it up, you can definitely see the significant size of the dropout holes in this particular pattern here, okay? If we compare that to where the frequency is set to 40, 40 looks like a solid fill graphic. The camera really can't pick it up, but you have to look really close to see what I would almost call pseudo microscopic holes within the design. So in other words, whenever we adjust the frequency, if we use a low frequency number, the dot hole is going to get bigger. If we use a high frequency number, the dot hole is going to get smaller. But like I said, we want to have these dots in there so that we give the design some flexibility, some softness, and we add to the wash durability. Now I've got one more set to show the folks at home both, so bear with me. Let's pull our second poster here. This is the one where we use the line mask, and let me move that down just a little bit both so that everyone at home can see. Now, again, this was using default settings where the frequency is set at 20. I did have to change the angle to 90 degrees to get the vertical lines, but we are using the line pattern with a hole size of 180. So let's compare that to the hole size change at 75. And you can see how much of not only the detail, but how much of the color we're losing by going with such an open mask, okay? Now, this particular design would be super flexible on a t-shirt or a garment, and it's gonna be very durable. But like I said, if we go with too much um, hole, or you know, if we set the hole size too low, we're losing a lot of that detail, okay? So, Let's try bumping up our hole size just a little bit. Instead of going with a default 180, this is the hole size set at 150. Now, as far as the break in the holes are concerned, it looks to be about the same distance. But as you can see, what we're essentially losing is a little bit of color. Why? because we've got that background white coming through. If this piece of paper were yellow, it'd be background yellow. Or if it were red, it'd be background red. But you get the point. You know, as we move up in the hole size, basically the gap in between the stripes is getting smaller, or the actual dropout line is getting smaller. Now, if we bump it up even more, Here is the design printed at a 225 hole size. So like I said, the bigger the hole size number, the tighter the dropout gets, the more of the design prints. 
So as you can see here, we pretty much have what I would consider to be the true intent of the design. But as I also mentioned, the downside is, is that now our mask, our dropout, is so small and so tight, it may not have the effect we need, which is softening up the design, allowing the flexibility and allowing the water to flow through it. So again, you know, we might have to do a little bit of experiment defining that perfect mat match or perfect mass size for our design. But once we got it, you know, then we're good to go. My advice would be if you roll with the defaults in the general in the uh, Digital Factory 10 RIP, you should be good to go. As a matter of fact, that's why they default them to those settings because hey, 90% of the time they work every time. Back to me, Rodeo. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of micromasking in the CadLink Digital Factory 10 RIP. I hope it was informative for you. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to hit us up at our inbox. T-T-P-P-H-H, -H, <coughs> no cough, at condi.com. Now also, if you have any friends in the industry that might benefit from this particular video, don't forget to share and don't forget to like. Um, we did a video a few weeks ago uh, regarding the supersize function in the Digital Factory 10 RIP. Uh, it was a very popular video. You can check that one out as well and keep tuning in to the T-Shirt Transfer Paper Power Half Hour for more informative videos. Now. As far as the power half hour is concerned, <clears throat> we are going to take our Christmas break here at the show. Uh, so this will be our last episode of the year, uh, but we will resume with a brand new season of the T-Shirt Transfer Paper Power Half Hour, and that will be starting Tuesday, January 11th at our usual 3.30 central time slot. So I hope everyone enjoys their holiday season. Be safe out there. And I will tune in with you guys again, January 11th, for our brand new season of the T-Shirt Transfer Paper Power Half Hour. Uh, for our executive director, Sprite, my producer, Rodeo Bo, and everyone at Condi, wish you happy holidays. Our time is up. We thank you for yours.